Psalm 119, Day 1, An Introduction. If you were given the task of describing perfection, you may draw from the natural world around you. For instance, the design of trees and plants. Perhaps how biological life is suited to its environment. Maybe even drawing upon the human body and all of its intricacies. Yet, if called upon to give something that has been produced or made, it may be more difficult. For, as they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That being said, it is a much more subjective endeavor to find perfection in that which is not in the natural world. But let us consider the Bible, perfectly given and preserved for our guidance. Yet within the sacred scriptures, there are passages that excite the mind of the reader and inspire the hearts of the believer. And they leave us awestruck in its complex simplicity. Now that last phrase may seem contradictory, but it bears investigating as to its veracity. Consider the opening chapter of Genesis describing the creation week. As humans, we would demand more of how and what and why of how it is to create a universe. Yet the account is sufficient in those 31 verses to account for all of the vastness of everything that there is. How about the Ten Commandments? Think of it. Ten comparatively brief commands to guide us in our relationship to Almighty God and to our fellow man. Maybe the 31st chapter of Proverbs that tells us of the excellent wife. And what more shall I say? Time would not permit to talk about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, or Paul's chapter on love, or his treatise on the armor of God, or the fruit of the Spirit, or perhaps Jesus' interpretation of the greatest commandment. All of that being said, I would like to offer Psalm 119, not as a necessarily short passage, but as one that is overwhelming in its language and content of the Word of God. Logistically, it is the longest psalm and the longest chapter in the longest book in the Bible. It is written in a rare style known as acrostic poetry, with each of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet given ten, eight stanzas. Pardon me. Its author is unknown, although variously attributed to the likes of David, or Ezra, or Daniel, among others. With the exception of two verses, each of the 176 verses has a various reference to the Word of God, using terms like commandments, statutes, precepts, words, rules, testimonies, and more. Here is how it has been treated by some rather well-known scholars over the years. William Wilberforce recited this psalm every morning on his way to the British Parliament. Others have memorized this psalm, including author John Ruskin and missionary David Livingstone. Matthew Henry, the Bible commentator, was encouraged by his father to meditate on one verse each morning, taking him through the psalm twice each year. Thomas Manton wrote three volumes of a commentary on this psalm alone, totaling well over 1,500 pages. Charles Spurgeon, the English preacher from the 1800s, compared Psalm 119 to a kaleidoscope, saying, You shift the glass a very little, and another shape, and beautiful is before your eyes. So it is here. You may recognize such memorable verses like, How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. Verse 9. Or perhaps, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Verse 105. Or maybe, make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Verse 135. For the 27 days that follow, we shall endeavor to scratch the surface of this wonderful song. It is hoped that both you and I will have gained an even more profound appreciation and greater understanding of Psalm 119. Some days we will consider only one verse from the eight that we shall choose. Some days we will choose more than one from those eight. Some days we will consider it sufficient to simply read the verses. This is not an exhaustive study 
considering Mr. Manton penned hundreds and hundreds of pages of this psalm. We'll spend but a few precious minutes each day. Perhaps you will find, as others have, a rare and wondrous work by which to bring you joy and gladness and one to give light to your path and light to your way.